Right, let's take a look at the castle doctrine. The castle doctrine, this is something that comes up a lot. A lot of people want to know about this. You know, what can you do in your home? Uh, what do you, when are you allowed to use a firearm? When can you protect yourself, your, your person? When, you can, when can you protect another person? When can you protect your property? They're very complicated questions, and they vary state by state. And so what we can do is just look at the statutes again and just take a quick look at them. So let's, this is a, going to be a brace yourself. Brace yourself. There's going to be a huge wall of text. I want to show you what we're talking about. This is from the actual Missouri statutes. It says use of force in the defense of persons. So the law makes a distinction between defending property and defending people. Here, what we're looking at first is the defense of other people. A person may subject to these subject to these provisions use physical force against another person to the extent he or she reasonably believes necessary to defend himself or herself from a third person from what he believes would be imminent use of unlawful force unless so you're allowed to do it unless one of these other provisions apply and I'll tell you I read through them and I don't I don't see any exclusions as to why they would not be allowed to, uh, to to defend themselves. So here, let's just take a look at a couple. The actor was the initial aggressor. That's not that's not the case, right? The McCloskeys didn't they didn't initially start this whole situation. They were on their property. The protesters came through, uh, or he or she has withdrawn from the encounter and in fe effectively communicated the withdrawal. So this would be. If the protesters came and they said, oh, this is private property. Sorry about that. We're going to leave now. And they turned around and left. Then that would be a withdrawal. And they communicated that. So now the McCloskeys can't go chasing them with firearms. That would be exceeding the scope of the law. They can't do that. But they were not the initial aggressors. And the protesters did not withdraw. In fact, they didn't. They kept going. And there was a back and forth. They were yelling at each other. And there was a lot of commotion and so on, right? And so some of the other exceptions, he or she is a law enforcement officer. No, the aggressor is justified under some other provision. No, uh, so that would mean that the protesters were justified uh, uh, coming on their property. Didn't see that anywhere. I haven't seen that in the facts. The actor was attempting to commit or, or committing or escaping the commission of a forcible felony. Basically, r really none of these other things apply. So if a person subject to feeling that they're reasonably and, and, and they're, they're fearful, they need to defend themselves, or there's going to be imminent you know, hurts or threats or, or unlawful use of force against them, then they can defend themselves. You can defend yourself. You don't have to wait until somebody has a gun to your head to start defending yourself. If you're feeling threatened and it's reasonable to feel threatened, which in my opinion, in my analysis, we've already covered it. They broke through a gate and they were coming right upon their property. We've seen chaos and turmoil throughout the entire country. Literal you know, buildings and businesses are being burnt down by so-called protesters who, who many of them are protesters. You know, they're just out there peacefully protesting. But it's getting really hard to distinguish between peaceful protests and Antifa or you know rioters or looting burning buildings down killing people people are dying all over the country it, in in lord large correlation to these protests to these riots to the to police standing down and so is it unreasonable in that environment for the mccloskeys to say hey we were legitimately scared over this thing i don't think so at all i think it's reasonable for them and i think they had every justification to protect themselves protect their lives against an unknown threat that was breaking into their private property they had every right to do what they did which is why these charges are so insane this other statute just so you can take a look at it i'm not going to read through it another wall of text content warning but this is the same this is a different statute that is talking about the use of physical force in the defense of property so even if the mccloskeys didn't have the ability uh to defend their property. I've already covered the defense of their person. They're allowed to do that. But I think there's also some good arguments here that they could defend their property with force, with the threat of lethal force. And so here's the statute if you want to look it up. Because it's so long, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. 563.041. A person may use deadly force under the circumstances only when such Forth, such forth is authorized by uh, you know, other sections of this chapter. So essentially what they're saying here is there are certain circumstances when you can defend against property. I don't need to go into it really because I think they had enough basis for just defending themselves personally. And that's really all that we need. So now that we know, I mean, that based on the evidence, it looks like, a, you know, 
the protesters broke onto their private property. They had a lawful right to defend themselves. The gun itself from Patricia was uh, fraudulently adjusted in order to justify the charges. <sighs> What does Kim Gardner say? Well, here's her statement. So she released this two days ago on July 20th. Statement from her. Today, my office filed charges against them following an incident on peaceful, unarmed protesters. It is illegal to wave weapons in a threatening manner at those participating in a nonviolent protest. And while we were fortunate the situation did not escalate, it's unacceptable. It was made after an investigation with St. Louis. I'm open to recommending the McCloskeys participate in one of my office's diversion programs that are designed to reduce unnecessary involvement with the courts, which is hysterical, right? It, it, she wants, she's got programs that she's created, diversion programs, which are great. I'm a huge fan of diversion programs. Diversion programs are typically used for like first offense types of situations. So let's say you go out. You go out to a, you know, a, a bar in your locality that has a lot of activity. You get into an altercation. There's an assault charge that you catch because you get into a fight with somebody. It's your very first offense. You go into court. Are they really going to th you know, throw away, lock you up and throw away the keys? The answer is no. They're probably just going to say, hey, go take some alcohol classes. Go take some anger management classes. In exchange for doing that, we're going to dismiss the charges against you. So in this situation, that's what Kim Gardner is saying. She's saying... I want these people to go and uh, take a class and that will solve the problem because we really don't want unnecessary involvement with the courts, even though her office is the one who charged these doc, th th these, these people to begin with. She started it. She brought the whole thing. So now she wants to sort of recommend they do diversion so they don't actually go to jail. They don't actually get convicted of a felony. They don't actually get a conviction for anything because as long as they do the diversion, all of the charges are going to be dismissed. So you can see now, you know, is it really a crime? Is this a political thing? You know, if this was really a heinous crime, would she be letting them off the hook so easily with diversion? Or is this just a political uh, thing that they want to do because she wants to increase her profile for some future run for office or whatever that looks like? She continues, we must protect the right to peacefully protest and attempt to chill it through. Any attempt to chill it through will not be tolerated. Uh, disturbing incidents. I'm open to wrecking, recommending diversion, equal justice. Okay. So it's a, it's a bunch more essentially nonsense. You know, what's happening here is she has been, uh, I think pressured or, or is willingly participating in a political prosecution because she thinks it will advance the interests of her office, of her state, uh, of her personally, you know, she wants to be in alignment with the protesters, who knows what, what the justification is for it, but I don't see it. I just don't see it there. The charging documents, I think, are uh, at least one of them is fraudulent. You know, they're saying that Patricia's gun was capable of being fired. It wasn't. It just doesn't meet the elements. And so I know other people have actually come out and uh, said that they want to throw this stuff out. So the governor came out and said they're going to pardon the McCloskeys, if this continues forward, and I believe the attorney general also filed a motion to dismiss the charges based on an illegal prosecution. And so prosecutors typically have to take an oath that says that they're going to promote justice. They're going to file charges that are justifiable. And this just wasn't justifiable. You know, there's there's a higher duty that prosecutors owe because they have a lot of the power. And so when you start to see a prosecutor like this really going after a couple because they're just standing on their property defending themselves against a mob who is coming through their their gates breaking and smashing their gates down uh you know i said this before i don't know what these people are expecting if kim gardner and the people who are like her who are constantly siding with the protesters and who are really advocating for a defunding of the police if this if that happens if they defund the police and people like the McCloskeys can't call the police to come and defend them, what other options are they left with? Are they supposed to just sit there and let people come onto their property, come on, break their gates, come into private areas? That will not happen. I know enough gun owners. I know enough people who are Second Amendment advocates that that would never happen, and nor should it. You shouldn't, in my opinion, have to rely on the government to come and take care of everything for you. If people are threatening you, threatening your life, you don't want to dial 911 and wait 10 minutes for the police to get there. You need to act immediately. So you have to default on those things for Kim Gardner to go ahead and charge these people. 
I think it's a, a prosecutorial misconduct. I think it is one of the most insane, rid ridiculous charges that I've ever seen uh, in my time. I just, I, unless other evidence comes out, I just don't know how it's even justifiable. So the defense attorneys, of course, are going to uh, do a great job with this. And I think that the charges are going to get dropped regardless. They're not going to participate in a diversion program. They'll both laugh at that. They'll take this thing. They'll continue to run with it because the McCloskeys are getting great publicity out of this. I don't know what their private lives are like, if they have private practice or whatever. But I can tell you that this is really increasing their profile and they're getting a lot out of it. And so it sounds like Kim Gardner and Missouri, these prosecutors, they want to be part of this discussion. And so they're entitled to do that. But I do think the charges are totally unjustified and they should not stand and they won't stand.